Welcome, so welcome to everyone to episode number 103 of the Let's Discuss Gaming podcast. I am your host, Triple J. Joining me is my co-host, Dr. Games 101 Hey there, guys. What's going on? And tonight might be a short episode. If you've watched previous episodes, like uh, in the like the very first episodes of the podcast, uh, you might remember that they weren't that long. Uh, we're probably going to have another one of those episodes. Just not much news hit tonight. Uh, we got seven stories and two discussions um, lined up for tonight. Perfect. Uh, ready to start with the first one? Indeed. Okay. So next, The Sims 4 is finally getting rid of one of its most annoying features with a free update. Time to say dag dag to one of Creator Sims' most grating qualities. Okay, this might sound like a small thing, but for those of us who have played a lot of The Sims 4, I think this is going to be a big deal. After 10 years of having to go through and apply accessories and makeup to each one of your Sims' looks, Maxis is adding an option to quickly apply your selections across outfits. Please join me in a collective sigh of relief. Boo! Oh, wrong, wrong emotion? Okay. Wrong reaction? All right. Uh, previously, all accessories and makeup looked very bland to a single... Um, oh, previously, all accessories and makeup looks were bound to a single outfit. This meant you would have to click each and every one of your Sims 8 outfits and reapply your watches, rings, necklace, bracelets, nail polish, eyeliner, blush, and more in order to create any sort of continuous continuity. Now, however, you will be able to simply click a box that allows you to apply an accessory or makeup look to all outfits. You'll also be able to uncheck the boxes of whatever outfits you don't want to have that particular look, just in case you don't want your sim to go running with a full um, beat. This is just one of the free quality of life changes coming to the popular life simulation game, alongside the Love Struck expansion on July 25th. Other changes include allowing you to set Sims as partners in the Create a Sim menu, a setting that ensures only stream-safe music plays, making eyelashes their own separate makeup category, and perhaps most importantly, the addition of relationship boundaries. So you can't make yourself, you can't make another guy try to steal your woman and then have it turn into like an X-rated, uh... <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I'll move on. <laughs> While relationship boundaries are an important part of the upcoming Love Struck expansion pack, the feature will be available to all players and will greatly impact sim autom um, automations. According to Maxis, the new system allows players to determine the physical and emotional boundaries of their sims' romantic interactions, meaning sims can choose romantic interactions with multiple sims without negatively impacting their individual relationships. To put things a bit more plainly, relationship boundaries establish what behaviors your sims will tolerate in a relationship and what actions will make them jealous. For example, you will now be able to create a sim who is unfazed by their partner engaging in woohoo with other sims. Is that supposed to be like whoopee on the love connection? <laughs> or, no, the newlywed game. But does not appreciate them flirting with someone in front of them. Though your sim can still be in a relationship with a sim who does not have the same boundaries as them, and can even have discussions in an attempt to renegotiate those boundaries, a sim repeatedly crossing the boundaries of their partner will automatically trigger a dramatic breakup. However, those looking to stay out of the drama can turn off the relationship boundaries feature in the game settings. Okay. Sims 4 Next Expansion Love Struck uh, adds even more fun features for the, in the, to the game. This includes two new prov, uh, personality traits, turn-ons and turn-offs, a new mm -hmm. town, death by broken heart, a new whoopee location, an adult board game, sexy costumes, and the infamous vibrating heart bed. The uh, Sims 4 Love Struck con, um, launches on July 25th and will cost $40. Dr. Games 101, we gotta get that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Let's look at comments. Um, okay, so no comments. It good. said one, but the person like must have deleted it or something. Yeah, good. Oh, no. That's a good so, thing. <laughs> um, what do you think of this new Love Struck connection on The Sims 4? Love Struck. I was like the Love Shack from that fucking um, music track. From um, the the bombers, the B bombers, has, the exact... it has nothing to do with that love shack. I don't know. I don't know. To be honest with you, I mean, the love stuff. I mean, obviously, since for is trying to appeal towards those type of people where they are very lonely and 
they have nothing better to do with their lives, drink a lot of box wine, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, try, they try to make sure to entertain the, the, the Sims gamers of those, of those sorts. Uh, that, in my opinion, that is. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, Sims 4 is always has to try to do something for, for the fans, that's for certain. Like with the LGBT stuff and then <laughs> all that stuff going on with, um, what's that, what's that called? With, uh, sort of theme songs or theme type of, um, Sims stuff. Uh, hell, there's like, what, seven, over $700 of, of uh, expansions and add ons yeah. to that game. So, anything's possible for any, uh, type of, uh, Sims 4 uh, gamer out there. So. I actually thought about trying to get The Sims 4 and getting every expansion except the Star Wars one. Really? That's going to cost you a lot of money right there. Yeah, but then I realized I was never going to play The Sims 4 that much to get my money back, so... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a good idea, my friend. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you know, it's... This, we, I mean, it just came out a few days ago, a couple of days ago. Uh, it's the 27th when we're recording this. So we don't know how big of a fuck-up this Love Struck uh, expansion is. Um, we'll probably find out on the next podcast. We'll probably have uh, reports by then. Um, I mean, when you can't even get horse horses right, you know you're in trouble. <laughs> um, they brought back something between Mr. Ed and a demon uh, when they tried to do horses. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, so. it's, it's like what are these the horsemen uh, what are these the horses that belong to the horse the apocalypse horsemen I mean <laughs> yeah something like that first <laughs> so yeah I mean you know it's a it's a new expansion unfortunately we don't know how it's gonna go because like I said it only launched a couple days ago um but like I said, I've just lost all hope in the, any Sims Four connect, uh, any Sims Four expansion working like it's supposed to right out of the gate. You had to keep beating that dead horse, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember when I said that to Darkness the Curse. I think it was about uh, Tekken. I think it was about Dead or Alive or Tekken. I forget which. And Darkness the Curse is like, "What did the horse do to you?" <laughs> So, yeah, so, I mean, if you like this expansion and you want to dive into the relationships, which is awfully, which is honestly probably the most um, interesting part of Sims, uh, as someone who has played The Sims 4, mm -hmm. um, then you might want this expansion. You might want to see it go, especially for the dramatic breakup for someone who keeps pushing boundaries um, of their partner. Um I actually wouldn't mind seeing the how the, the uh, animation of the breakup, um, but that's that's yeah that's all we know about the Sims Four newest expansion. Keep making more and more of these, thank God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as, lo as long as long as they keep the Sims Four going, we'll we'll definitely have content. That's for, uh, that's for sure. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ready to move on? Yeah, we can move on. Alright. Next. Up. Oh, let me turn the... So you can see what I'm seeing. Yeah, I got thunder and storms in my area, so... Hopefully, I don't lose power. FTC takes aim at Microsoft for Xbox Game Pass changes. The FTC says the new Xbox Game Pass tiers proved it was right to oppose Microsoft and Blizzard's merger. Earlier this month, Microsoft unveiled this new Xbox Game Pass tiers while raising the prices and taking away day one releases, cloud gaming, and more features from the lowest subscription plan. Games like Call of Duty Black Ops 6 will also be reserved for Game Pass Ultimate and Game Pass Console now. The Federal Trade Commission is taking aim at Microsoft's actions in federal court and arguing that the company's actions have harmed consumers. The FTC opposed Microsoft 2003 merger with Activision Blizzard has and filed a lawsuit that ultimately failed to stop it from going through. Now the FTC has made a filing in the U.S. North Circuit Court of Appeals that slams the new Xbox Game Pass standard tier as a degraded product. Moreover, the FTC argues that Microsoft's actions fly in the face of how the company promised that it would conduct itself if the merger with Activision Blizzard was approved. 
Product degradation. Removing the most valuable games from Microsoft's new service, combined with price increases for existing users, is exactly the sort of consumer harm from the merger the FTC has alleged. The filing also calls out Microsoft's broken promise that the merger would benefit consumers by allowing them to get games like the new Call of Duty on Game Pass without raising prices. Okay, so they did break that promise. Yep. <laughs> uh, since the merger with Activision Blizzard was completed last year, it's unclear how or if the FTC's court filing will change anything for the gamers who subscribe to Game Pass. But the filing does note that Microsoft's actions have vindicated the FTC's attempt to prevent the merger from happening in the first place. So let's see if there's comments. Yep. So whoever uh, whoever posted on the Sims 4 article must have deleted their comment. Uh, Nintendians goes, this is a stupid case. Microsoft could have, could have increased the price for Xbox PC Game Pass even if they don't own Activision Blizzard. And Bobo and Bobo 888 goes to Nintendians, they didn't just increase the price. And Nintendians says in response, even if Microsoft doesn't own Activision Blizzard, Microsoft could still do on what's in store to their liking. Okay, so um, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Yeah, you go first. <laughs> okay, um, just act, just because I do have a lot to say, um, Nintendians is obviously um, obviously missing the plot because um, <laughs> uh, they said that uh, they would not. They they yeah, true. They Microsoft is a company; they can raise their prices whenever they want, however they want. That's <laughs> true. But when they said that people, uh, they say, also said that like Call of Duty would be available to all Game Pass subscribers on day one. Um, or at least anyone who had access to the hundreds of games of Game Pass, they, because when they made this, uh, when they made got the Activision Blizzard deal approved, there was no th there was no in between merger. It was either you had Game Pass Core or Game Pass Ultimate if you were uh, if you were on console. PC hasn't really been affected. The it's been affected the least, so that's why I'm not really talking about them. Of course. Um, but, like, yeah, it was either Game Pass Core, where you get a handful of games, like 35, and you could play the games you downloaded when you had game pa games with gold and stuff like that, or you could play Game Pass Ultimate and you had everything. You had cloud gaming, you had uh, day one releases, you had uh, uh, access to over 300 games. Uh, the list goes on and on. Now, Xbox created this, or Microsoft created this in-between tier where you don't get cloud gaming, where you don't get day one releases where you don't get um, where um, some of the I think uh, subscription services like EA or whatever or Ubisoft they, they don't do business um, you don't get their games if you're on that middle tier and then they raise the prices that's what that's what the FTC is saying I'm, I can't believe I'm actually defending the FTC but this is actually but I mean this is just how much Microsoft has uh, screwed basically um, their their uh, players. Um, you it's either you pay five dollars more a month for the ultimate game pass, or you don't get cloud gaming. You don't get day one releases. And like I said, I'm I really wish the uh, I wish the uh, I wish the merger never did happen, because we've gotten nothing. No one's gotten anything from it. What did Microsoft do? They shut down a bunch of successful studios. Yep. But what happened to all the games that just entered your library? You know, like I, we, me and Doctor Games One Hundred One talked about it. You had Tony Hawk. You had now. You had, um, Ma I think, um, not Mafia, but you had uh, True Crime. Now you had, uh, you had like, and I, those are the only couple that I can remember, uh, series. But you had all these games now, and you did absolutely nothing with them. And that's the problem. You did nothing with them, and then you said, oh yeah, the Call of Duty, you better be subscribed to the next tier if you want the new Call of Duty. Oh, you still want cloud gaming and day one and day one releases? That'll be $5 extra a month, please. Or you can get this middle tier, but you don't get any of that. They try to act like Sony with the three tiers that they did start it this year. That's stupid on their part, Microsoft. They know they have to be in competition with Sony, so might as well leave it as what they had for decade, for years. For the Game Pass and all, there was no problems with the Game Pass um, pricing um, earlier this year, late last year especially. Now all of a sudden, they try to act like um, Sony. 
Another thing, if Game Pass was so, if Game Pass needed their prices raised to just make ends meet or make to actually make turn a profit, maybe you shouldn't have been putting all your eggs in the Game Pass basket. Hmm. Maybe, maybe you should realize that you're still one of the viable consoles, or you were until you until you destroyed that yourself. It, it's amazing. I that's one thing I can't get. It's not Nintendo or Sony that killed Microsoft's console. It's Microsoft that killed Xbox. Oh yeah, definitely. Especially with their DEI and woke stuff like that we hear for the last couple that. of years. Not even that. It's just Microsoft has been. You know, they they said we officially lost the console war. Oh yeah, it's Phil Spencer literally said it out loud on an interview of that with Geeks and Gamers or some equivalency of that source, you know. And it's like it's like, well, you know, tell an army, you know, let, let's see what happens when an army says in a war, we officially lost the war. <laughs> oh yeah, that's not gonna look good on their part. So, uh, yeah, so I mean, that's so it's yeah, so this is, uh, you know, honestly, I like I said. I don't like the FCC or the FTC or really any of these organizations, but I, but Microsoft has been such a fuck up that I'm actually agreeing with them. Mm -hmm. You know when you got me agreeing with the FTC or the FCC or any of these organizations alike. Consumer affairs as well, yeah. You know you fucked up if I'm actually agreeing with them, because I never agree with them. Yeah, you have to see it for for the, the corporation's sake. Yeah, so I mean, you know what? But like I said, it's just another reason to go back to retro. I'll just keep I'll just keep saying it as much as um, often as these uh, choices are made. Yeah, we can do our let's plays with uh, with our audiences for the next few months and years with the. Uh, PS3, PS2, N64 I did the other year so no no big deal yeah because I'm not going to spend $20 more a month not more not more but $20 altogether every month for the next God knows how many years and then it increased again I hear too another year from now it's like you know it, all this inflation is affecting everything we know that but Microsoft's a $3 trillion company there is no way they could just like increase prices with ease they, that's gonna, people are going to just accept it easily it, it, you have some customers pay for it no matter what if they have the money for it me personally I can't I can but then again it's like you know I'd rather just buy a couple of games a year or buy cheap games on sale and then just stick it with those games and do let's plays and just regular game on private okay. sessions myself whatever that's about it you know um, hold on one moment sure uh, Water, gas, and she's going to take care of it. Okay, so the water, so, so the city of Nashville? Yeah, the city of Nashville, and there's two of them. There's three, Mediacom and Power. Yeah, but, uh, that's it. City and Power. Okay. Okay, so, I'm, I'm sorry, back. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, that's that's exactly what I want to do, you know, because I don't, you know, I, I mean, okay, so I'm gonna miss out on some things, but like I said, if I gotta pay twenty dollars a month, I'd rather be building up my video game collection um, of games I want to play and do let's plays of than have games that I, you know, that Microsoft decides what they want to do when they want to do it, and like you said, another ways could and prices could happen any time. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah, so, yes, uh, like I said, you, you got me agreeing with the FTC, and when you did that, when you got that, when you're so bad at that, that you made me agree with them, hmm. you lost the plot. Oh, so, yeah. it's, so it's not just the Tendians that lost the plot, it's also uh, Microsoft, but then again, I don't think that's news to anyone. Yeah, Microsoft. I mean, the corporations always always be corporations for expanded for sake of uh, profits and stuff like that. That's that's their that's their shtick. That's their goal. That's their being as a corporation. But there's also times where you get these key people in your companies, like Major Nelson leaving, or um, well, so the three for three industries uh, studios leaving 
key key uh, Halo makers have been around for for decades. Uh, even uh, if you want to call them, actually call it decades. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Major Nell specifically, he's been around for twenty years with the company and the found. If you want to call him the founding father of the Xbox achievements. I try to tell that to the younger gamers and stuff like that. They, they, they don't give a damn about that stuff. No offense to some people out there. I'm like, you guys gotta understand, like, these people put their livelihood in, in their lives and, and online just to make the best party out there. And I once told them the, the corporation started to turn to, to the big, bad, evil corporation type of scenario. It's like, what the hell, man? Like, we, we, we dedicate a lot of our time, money, and effort to make sure that company sustains itself. And it's the per- this is what we get is increased prices, you know? So Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and it's it, the thing is, like I said, it's kind of it's kind of dumb because they don't even uh, like say you want to buy like Far Cry Six or uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon digitally, you still gotta pay sixty dollars. So it's not even like Microsoft's lowering the price for these games. They're still like, no, you want to buy it digitally, you gotta pay full price. Seven dollars, so, especially. So it's like so it's like either buy it on so it's either pay for Game Pass so you can play it, or buy it or pay full price for a game that's like four years old. Mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, you could always buy a, a copy online, you know, for you know from eBay or whatever. It's, I mean, like I've seen I've seen copies of Yakuza Like a Dragon go for like ten dollars if it's just disc only. Right, this is going to disappear too little by little if we're not careful so well like I said they'll always be retro because you know so many games were released from the NES generation to the PS3 Wii U generation um, that you know there's there, there's no way we'll all get to play all of them oh yeah and the scalpers make the, some, of the, some of the games so expensive that you have to be a very wealthy person just to pay to pay and play the, the, the basic copy well, those, that's, uh, that's used at least that. Well, those go- those games are also, it's not just that. I mean, keep in mind, um, if I forget, I think it was uh, Bible, one of the Bible games videos. We're going to talk about Angry Video Game Nerd later. Okay. Um, but in his Bible Games 2 video, he said uh, Sunday Funday, which was uh, We Skin a Menace Speech, was released for Nintendo in 1995 as the last Nintendo game. 1995 and I think was the year PlayStation came out. I think N64 came out in 96. So we were just getting in. So N64 was just about to came out when the last Nintendo game was released. Mm. That's why that's, that's another reason why these games are so, um, some of them are so expensive, like Turtles three, the Manhattan project, uh, DuckTales two, they came out so far in Nintendo's life cycle that not many people were buying them because everyone was focusing on super Nintendo. So, these copies were not made, you know, these copies were not, uh, the copies that were purchased were very few, uh, compared to, like, the Turtles 2 arcade game, or the first DuckTales game. Okay. So many copies were, so few copies were sold, um, from people who actually bought them when they came out, that, uh, that, um, that's what... And now they're so rare because only so few exist because so many, so few people bought them in the first place. Oh yeah, you know, in 1995, 1996, think about yourself. Were you caring about getting your hands on any Nintendo games? Some extent, depends on what which one they are. I met, I mean, Nintendo for eight bit Nintendo. Oh, Nintendo NES. Okay, yes. yeah, can't can't recall. <laughs> yeah, so that's, I mean, but yeah, like I said, you know with the internet with video game reviewers and everything um you know you can you can find out which ones are good and which ones aren't it might take a while to find one that's good yeah but you know like i said you know look i'm looking up game scores and you know finding a game on ebay Ooh, i wonder how this game goes i wonder what this game is rated i wonder what reviewers said about this game hmm, and then you make your decision on that if you want to buy it or not um, anything else to add, or do I need to move on? We can move on now. All right. Next. Hihachi is back and comes to Tekken 8 this fall. Oh, yeah. Tekken 8's next season one fighter was revealed during EVO this weekend, and it's none other than Hihachi Mishima. The mainstay villain has apparently survived his 
presumed death again and is ready <laughs> to reclaim the throne. A cinematic trailer rolls out the red carpet for Hihachi, setting up his return after he was seemingly killed, um, tossed into a volcano, lava river, in Tekken 7. The video doesn't explain how Hihachi managed not to melt into goop, but he does sport a Kazuya-esque sear on his chest now, so he didn't walk away completely unscathed. Hihachi becomes available sometime this fall. He follows Eddie Gordo and Lydia Sabuski, who joined Tekken 8 in the spring, um and summer um, in the spring and summer respectively leaving one fighter left for the winter season owner of Tekken's 8 deluxe ultimate or collector's editions automatically receive these fighters and each can also be purchased individually for $7.99 um, so let's look at comments hmm. Hmm. Uh, let's see so uh, Frisch goes What's even the point of killing him off? And Zatovic <laughs> goes, not sure. And Arius underscore GS goes, nobody dies in a video game. Check out Liu Kang. <laughs> Definitely Liu Kang, yeah. <laughs> so what, so um, I know you're a bigger Tekken fan than I am. Um, I kind of fell off after Tekken 4 and uh, Tekken Tag Tournament 2. Oh, yeah. Um, how do you feel change. about Hihachi returning? They've definitely changed those Tekken Tag Tournament 2 and to, um, um, Tekken 4. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny, though. It's the second time they, they made Hihachi um, relive again. I mean, that if you go back to Tekken 5, at the beginning of Tekken 5's intro, uh, Hihachi uh, at first died in the explosion where Raven um, re you know, viewed the, the explosion and all for his report toward the headquarters of uh, Mishiro Bazabutsu, whatever you want to call it. If I recall correctly, exactly. Um, so that was that's the first time. Now all of a sudden he's just, he, we thought he died at end of Tekken Seven when Kazuya, his um his um Kazuya was his son, he threw him into the lava after being defeated by Kazuya and all. And all of a sudden, minutes later after Kazuya did that, his um uh, Akuma, who was a, a visitor of Tekken from Street Fighter and all, you know, they started wailing out and we don't know what happened after that. because um, it was the cliffhanger. So, you know, I had to play more of the Tekken 8 and all to understand more of what happened to Kazuya and uh, Akuba and all. So, and Jin as well, too. Now, he's in the mix, too. Between that tr triangle fa father son slash, you know, supporter fight, you know. Because uh, what happened was that um, Akuma was he what helped, that he was helped by Ihachi's wife, uh, Kazumiya, if I remember pronounced this correctly. Uh, I could be, it's been a while since I played Tekken 7. Sorry, guys. So the wife of Ehachi uh, helped him out, and the wife uh, asked uh, Ehachi to kill off Ehachi later on in life as she dies. Kind of weird shit going on back then with, the ha with those favors happening between the um, Akuma and Ehachi's wife and all. So And then all of a sudden, too, Jun makes a return back, too, in Tekken 8. She survived whatever happened to Ogre in Tekken 3. So, because Togo three in on Tekken three, Ogre, that, that's his name in Tekken three, of course, the boss, but the boss fighter, uh, he cut off his uh, her head. Um, uh, Kazumi, the Jun, Jun, to Jun, got her head cut off by uh, Ogre in Tekken three, and all, which doesn't make any sense. So how did she survive that? So and Jin, of course, you know, he was the the the, the head star of Tekken three, obviously, because he was that's his introduction to the family and all in Tek in the Tekken series. It's a, it's a long story, guys. A very, very long series of events happened for the last 25 years of taking all together. You have to be a... I would start from scratch when you were a kid like me. My first my first game I played at, at, um, as a, at Tekken was Tekken 2. And I've been following, the game, I've been following it since, the story. In, in perspective of the gameplay, that is. Not the YouTube videos. I try best not to do YouTube videos because it's not the same. You're not going to get that in-depth if you don't know the people's fighting abilities and interactions and all. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a story connected with Wei, uh, Wei Lu, uh, Lu, Lu Long, uh, Lei Wulong, and Steve Fox and Nina because Nina is the mother of Steve Fox. So it's, it's, it's a huge complex of stories intertwined with each other somehow, some way. So get your, get your copy of Tekken, you know, as early, early back as Tekken 5 if you can. After that, then it gets much better after that, in my perspective. Way better. You know, so that's all I got to say for the matter. Okay, yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, I don't have much to say because I've obviously been out of the Tekken lore because Tekken 5 and 6 warned me to bang my head, bit me bang my head into a wall. 
He has lots of lots, lots of discovery. You have to play if you really want to start. For, if you really want to have understand about the Tekken story, just start start with playing Tekken One. As far as like the the game playing is concerned, gets a feel of the matter and the basics and all. And then if you want to if you want to skip some Tekken, you got to go to Tekken Three from Tekken One, then Tekken uh, Three to Tekken Four, and then Tekken Five, and then te Tekken Six is kind of like you know you don't really have to play it. But it's good to know it's more about the story in detail with, with Aliska Boskanovich and all. Because Dr. Boskanovich was in Tekken 3. So, that's how I look at it in my perspective. Okay, so. well, like I said, um, you know, just from a gameplay perspective alone, um, I hated Tekken 5 and Tekken 6. Oh, um, yeah? Well, not from gameplay perspective, but, like, uh, I still, I still, and I'm cringing bringing this up, the Devil Jin mode in Tekken 5, um... And oh just, yeah, the story mode style of the and the, the and the story and the story mode off in Tekken Six. Oh my God, I tried to give it a second chance. I played it while I lived here, and I still can't get through it. It was and, hard, yeah. I, I'm still gonna part with the gun jacks and all. So I mean, yeah, it's and the thing is, I would I think I would like that. I would think I would like a story, you know, with all the Tekken characters and stuff, but not when it's that boring. I'd rather watch the Tekken movie than play Tekken 6. Yeah, though, with Aliska Boskanovich and Lin Chao Yu together, that scene. Uh, what, in the movie? Yeah, there's a movie that came out with a uh, star uh, Lin Chao Yu, uh, Aliska Boskanovich, Nina Williams, I think, and a couple of the Tekken players. Not all the Tekken players, of course, just some right. of them. And uh, that movie, I forgot what it called exactly. You can look it up somewhere on the internet. And you can watch, get it for about 30 bucks, 20 bucks on, on DVD or Blu ray. So. Okay. Well, I'm I'm talking about the original Tekken movie that came out like in 2010. Oh, that um, one. Okay. Never yeah. Mind. I'd rather watch that than play Tekken Six Story. Okay. Um, I mean, like I said, the only good thing is Kelly Overton, who played Christy, was hot. Um, mm hmm. That's the only good thing about that movie. <laughs> um, oh, okay. I mean, you showed me that fight scene with Nita Williams versus uh, uh, what's the other player? The other Christy. fighter. Chrissy, okay. Unfortunately, they can't do the video game moves, obviously, the girls. We, we, we don't need limitations, ladies. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it wasn't Nina. I think in the movie she fought Anna. Nina's oh, sister. yes, Anna. Yeah, Anna. Yeah, Nina and Anna hate each other. It, it, all, well, started, it, start, it all started from that slap that um, Nina once gave to um, Anna and in Tekken 3 and all. They, they started killing each other with bazookas and shit in Tekken 5. <laughs> And the thing is, like the death, uh, death by degrees game, where you play as Nina as an assassin. Um, mm -hmm. You know that was that was actually a good game, if okay. you watched on the controls. Um, but yeah, so I mean, yeah, so I've, it's just been hard for me to get into the Tekken story. And it's like after Tekken Six story bored me again. I'm like, I tap out. I'm I'm getting off. Yeah, it's a lot of story to cover. If if you want to play by 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 the basic, the the, the 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 legitimacy of the Tekken timeline, if you really have that kind of patience. But if you want to fast forward, all no, just just watch a few videos of uh Tekken uh, two, Tekken four. But the gameplay you should do and the story style should you play Tekken one, uh, five, and maybe six. If you really want to know more about the Liska Pascalovich and Tekken seven, that's about it. So that's how I look at it. Yeah, so, anyway, um, Hi Hot, for people who do play Tekken 8, Hi Hachi is going to be available. Um, he is coming back. Um, Again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, it's going to be the second time. Like, uh, he's getting too old, too, Hachi. Because, uh, what's the guy, that, Wang Shaolong, his his uh, his uh, friend? Because Hachi and Wang were friends back in Tekken 2 and all. Wang's going to kill up through old age. And, Te and, and Hachi's not getting any um, younger. So he has to be died off eventually through old age, you know. Right. Well, like, well, that's the good thing about video games. People don't have to die unless you just have no use for them. Yeah, like Wang. I mean, he could have stayed. He could have gotten immort not immortality, but some sort of like special power to stay a lot longer than one hundred and five hundred ten years old. You know, because right. they killed him off in Tekken um in six between Tekken five and Tekken six. So, and, and what about Bruce? The guy, not Bruce Lee, the, the, uh, the law, whatever. <laughs> not Bruce Lee. <laughs> but but this guy, it's a black guy. He's a kick, a kickbox named Bruce. They got rid of him after Tekken Five. I'm like, what happened to the guy? He, I thought he, that was I thought that was Eddie. No, Eddie Eddie Gordo is a capoeira fighter. Bruce oh. is the kickboxer. Oh, 
Oh, and okay. It, yeah, Eddie Guerrero was old guy out of jail on Tekken 3 when he just started to start, be introduced to the game of Tekken 3. While okay. Bruce, he's been around since Tekken 2. Uh, yeah, so... And, um, so anyway, um, I don't really have much to say about the Tekken lore. Like I said, I've been out for a few games. I have no interest in coming back, especially after Tekken 6. So, but if you do play Tekken 8, Hihachi is going to be joining the roster. Yeah, I cannot wait to get myself a, a, my, my hands on a, either Xbox Series or PS5 to play Tekken 8. I want to know more about that story between Jin and, and Kazuya now, because now, now it's father versus son in, 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 that, in that relation, not Jinpachi, not Ehachi as well. So it's, it's like a countdown to elimination of the family members, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to move on? Oh, yeah. Good yeah. point at the end of Tekken 7 as well, too, about family as well. Okay. I'm ready to move on. All right. Next. Xbox fires back at the FTC's claims game, that Game Pass has been degraded. Microsoft is challenging the FTC's claim that the new Xbox Game Pass is hurting gamers. The U.S. government didn't let Microsoft buy Activision Blizzard without a fight, although the Federal Trade Commission's lawsuit to block the merger ultimately failed. Earlier this month, the FTC took aim at Microsoft again with a filing in federal court that claimed this new Xbox Game Pass tier was a degraded product. Now Microsoft is firing back. Via game developer, Microsoft responded to the FTC with a court filing of its own that was posted online by The Verge's Tom Warren. The short version is that Microsoft acknowledges that the new Game Pass standard tier is more expensive than the discontinued Game Pass console tier but it also offers multiplayer functionality that was previously sold separately. Additionally, the company argues that Game Pass Ultimate's price increase is justified because more new games will be available day, day and date on the service. Essentially, Microsoft is claiming that the FTC is trying to reinvent its case against the company's, Activis against the company's Activision Blizzard's acquisitions, and that's wrong to call this a degraded version of the discontinued Game Pass for console offering. The filing also notes that the FTC barely mentioned subscription um, at trial and restates that Microsoft signed a 10-year deal with Sony to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation as part of the original conditions for the merger. Now Microsoft is still missing the plot. It's, mm. We're not talking about so giving Sony a fair shot at Call of Duty. Oh my. <laughs> you don't have to be smart to be a CEO. Microsoft, just shut up. <laughs> Please. Actually, actually, why do I want them to do that? This is content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so far, the federal court hasn't weighed in on the FTC's filing or Microsoft's response. It seems unlikely that the Activision Blizzard merger could be easily undone at this point. But it remains to be seen if the court will take a side in the latest battle. Meanwhile, the first Call of Duty is on the way on the way to the subscription service as Modern Warfare 3 releases for Game Pass on July 24th. We will be talking about that later. Uh, let's look at comments. Um, sort by upvotes. Um, Gates, Gats by the Pig goes, When it comes to litigations, hurting the consumer and defeating antitrust suits, Big Tobacco didn't get nothing on Microsoft. And uh, Dozness goes, they should have removed GP console that allowed console comes owners to play the games. Or they shouldn't have removed GP console. Okay, and XNSHD goes, stacked up on Game Pass Ultimate, although Microsoft rewards after the price increase announcement. Once the, that subscription is done, I won't be subscribing. By then, it would have been likely risen in price again, and I'd be looking at paying over twenty pounds a month for a service a few years ago that was twelve, that was thirteen pounds a month. Mm. Um, and I'll just one more comment. Uh, just one more goes to Massive Ten Pack. So much for Phil's lies. We want everyone to play on our EQ system. When everyone plays, we all win. Lies. Hmm. Okay. Um. Wow. It's. I didn't think people could be this dumb, and I'm talking about Microsoft here. I didn't think people could be this dumb unless they had an actual mental um, condition. But they, but apparently these people are make are talking, so uh, they they are that dumb. Mm. We're not talk. Okay, Microsoft, if you're listening, if you're not, then then listen to someone that's 
talk, tell, saying the same thing I do, just in a different way. Try to get this through your heads. We're not talking about what you, what Sony's doing. We're not talking about your deal with Sony. That's not what we're look. That's not what the FTC is looking at this time. The FTC is looking at you raising prices and saying, "Yeah, day one game, day one game uh, releases, uh, cloud gaming, new games coming to the service. That's only on the most expensive tier. But you can take this tier that gets none of that. That's what they're looking at." Um, but Microsoft fires back. Uh, yeah, the, it's it's is a is is a degraded product. This new Game Pass tier, this middle of the road tier. Um, what what really? What's the point? I mean, sh- it's close to what it was, uh, but and then, but I mean, they have a console tier that no one else, that only existing members can use. Um, and if their subscription lapses, then they're out of that tier forever. They got this one that removes most of the perks that even made having Game Pass worth it. Mm. And then they raise the prices of the ones that have the ter- perks that everyone wants. Mm-hmm. I don't know why it's so hard for Microsoft to understand what the problem is. Yeah. I tell uh, you, they're very defensive lately for quite some time now. Thanks to Phil Spitzer and the vice president um, black lady uh, chick. Yeah, but I mean, they're saying like, "Oh, look, we did what Sony we did we did a deal with Sony like you wanted." Wonderful. When was that mentioned? It once in the newest FTC filing. <laughs> it's called it, Microsoft Xbox division. It's called an idea. Have one, please. <laughs> <laughs> for the love of God, for the love of gaming. I mean. Yeah, they're saying basically that you got the Activision. Um, to sum it up, basically they're saying Microsoft, you got the Activision Blizzard merger that you wanted, and now you're basically locking the Activision Blizzard content behind the most expensive tier of Game Pass, and you're mm-hmm. trying to pass off this other one, this middle of the road one, as um, a compromise if people can't, don't want to pay or can't afford twenty dollars a month. That's what the FTC is really upset about, because all that new content, or lack thereof, I really should say, um, is is on the new is only on the expensive, uh, most expensive um, tier now. So, and that's the problem. That's because you're offering this this other Game Pass tier, which they might be looking at as a compromise, is a is a joke. Let's be honest. Oh yeah. Um, and you know, keep in mind, I used to be subscribed to Game Pass for for like well, a couple of years on end, maybe even more. Um, I was subscribed for a number of years, nonstop, renewing my subscription every month. So I was a big, big uh, Game Pass. Um, and most of the time, what I played was on Game Pass. So it's yeah. So I was a big uh, supporter of Game Pass and it's honestly almost it was almost like a drug and like uh, when I let my Game Pass subscription lapse because I just didn't have the time right. um, it it's kind of like it's kind of like wow I'm clean hmm. and I don't need to pay $20 a month to play games I got games or I can spend $20 a month on games I want oh yeah you know um do you have anything else to say to this? Uh, for me, it's this, though. Xbox, Microsoft, um, they've been involved in the game market for a good 20 years now, almost 25 years. Yep. Um, and the first, uh, they're the first ones that started this subscription service for the console games since it was 2001, which is sucks on their part to do that. Because Microsoft, yes, they try to outbeat Sony to some extent, but they, they actually kind of did a couple of times so far because... Back in 2001, you know, with the um, with the subscription service and all, Microsoft, you know, trying to pay like, make people pay like was it uh, ten dollars a month, whatever, for for Xbox Gold, and all well and good, it's not that bad at first for the first several years because Sony was free every month to, to play their online service and stuff like that, so yeah, it's a good trade off. But now all three companies, Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft. They try to act like each other and be a conglomerate of their own free fruition to make people pay for everything. And I'm like, 
man, this is not good because people are going to turn away eventually. Especially the older the gamer is, the more likely they're not going to spend all that money towards their subscription services. You know, you probably get the younger gamers to do that because they're so used to the mark that kind of marketing and gaming and all. But that's about it. As as they get older, it's going to be uh, an ultimatum where it's like, hey, if we're not going to get the games I wanted, or if it's not going to be qual high quality, and play online and stuff like that, where I just get get a PC system and take mm -hmm. hang it up. You know, that's what I did back in in uh, two thousand and seven because I didn't have a, um, a Xbox, Nintendo system, or even a um, a Sony PS3 or PS4 at the time. I, well, PS3 actually, but you know what I mean? Basically, back in 2007, I was playing PC a lot. Alien vs. Predator 2 and Medal of Honor, Hitman 2, Silent Assassin, Tomb well, Raider, so, Gold Edition. Well, so. in 2007, the PS3s were kind of new. Um, oh, yeah. And the Xbox 360. I think the X, um, I think the Xbox 360 came out in 2006? Five, oh, actually. 2005? Really? That yeah. late? That early, yeah. I mean? Same time with uh, Nintendo, with uh, Nintendo, so uh, we. Okay, well, I I wasn't I really didn't pay attention to the Wii until my younger brother lost interest years later. So, um, right. but I I I got my 360 like in 2006. I think I got my, no, I think I got my 360 in 2008. Okay. And my PS3 like 2009. So, but okay. the PS3 I bought from a friend at work who didn't want it anymore. Um, the 360 okay. was a Christmas gift for my mother. Um, so yeah, so um. Okay, I didn't. I didn't know the systems were out that early. Yep, Xbox 360 definitely was recent as early as uh, fall of 2005, and since then it made a big impact in gaming. Perfect timing too for everything, because the first, the first of everything, not first ever, but the, the technology innovation where it's like that's the first ever gaming where where it has the achievements. Yep, the first ever game console to actually have um, a DVD player that's fully functional. Well, the what? PS2 also had a DVD player. Oh, that's a, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Sorry about that. But, but you know what I mean, pretty much, where it's like, because now you can browse on the internet on the Xbox console with no limitations like that on the Dreamcast. Right. So, because not everyone has a computer back then, especially. Yeah. It's not to mention, also, the 360, um, so, yeah, so the 360, um, what was I going to say? You know, uh, since you brought it up, I do want to talk about it. Achievements. Um, I love the achievements on the 360. Um, I like it when because it basically adds replay value. Oh, definitely. For most games. Um, there are some games that just don't use them correctly, like Life is Strange. Basically, you got you know, the achievements are reach every chapter, which meaning if you play the story, you're going to do that anyway. And we live every memory, even the optional memories, which that's the that's the extent of the uh, replayability. Making sure you find every memory and relive every one. Um, I'm talking about Life is Strange, True Colors, by the way. Um, right. But also the achievements. I hate uh, one thing I hate about them is when they make online achievements. It's like when the console. It's like when the server dies, you're not going to be able to get that achievement anymore. Not unless you go through a lot of, not unless you buy multiple consoles and start your own private net server, and base and basically, um, if you have that, if you have that much time, you you got too much time on your hands. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yes, but um, like uh, you know, some 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 games make you makes use of these uh, achievements correctly. Some don't. Um. But that, I, I, like I said, I thought, um, at least for most of them, with the offline achievements that you can earn, it's it's adds replayability. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, uh, with Microsoft, Sony, and even Nintendo being the way they are, um, why would I want to support them? Oh, yeah. Uh, after, yeah. After a while, after a while, Microsoft started to get more greedier than ever. I mean, at first, you know, they they featured in the beginning, the very beginning of their of their tenure as a gaming company with the Rock and all, and then you know, Bill Gates, you know, was uh, in his prime as a CEO of the company of Microsoft. Not hearing all this nonsense with the politics and all of the bad and the, the divorce and all, so it's uh, one of the best times of our lives, I have to say, as a gamer, in my opinion, that is. 
And, you know, and now these are starting to be exposed with the game industry now, with gamer game stuff. So it's kind of like, it's very, what, what Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony should do is try to relive those memories again or relive the um, the competition with the, within those three companies. Because if you, if you don't, if you try to milk every customer out so quickly, so little, and so long, it's like, uh, it's, it's not going to look good on their part in the long run. So, yeah. So again, you know, um, uh, again, Xbox 360, just get a clue because it, it looks like you have no idea why the FTC is upset, and it's and it's not like it's a bunch of legal hidden behind a bunch of legal jargon. You know, I'm a I'm a high school graduate, no college degree, and I understand why the FTC is upset. And How I'm a, do you not? And I'm a five time college dropout, and I know a thing too. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, if if un, if uh, people who did the bare minimum in schooling, to be to be honest, um, even though we went to college, we never finished. Um, yeah. <laughs> we, you know, if we can understand it, how is it so hard to understand? Definitely. Anything else to add, or ready to move on? I'm good for now. We can move on. Right. Next. Game Pass is finally getting its first Call of Duty later this week. Activision's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 is reportedly coming to Xbox's subscription service soon. It appears that finally, almost a year after completing its acquisition of Activision, Microsoft is adding a previously released Call of Duty game, 2023's Modern Warfare 3, to the Netflix-like subscription service and you won't have to wait long. We've known since May that Black Ops is 6, the next major installment in Activision's mega-popular first-person shooter series, Call of Duty, will launch day one on Game Pass. But what has been more a lot of mystery is when past Call of, du is when past Call of Duty games, like the original Black Ops, World at War, and Modern Warfare, will be added to the increasingly more expensive and, completed and complicated tiers of Xbox Game Pass. According to a new report, it seems 2023's Modern Warfare 3 will become the first Call of Duty game to land on Game Pass. Please, I'd like to just go over what Kotaku mentioned. It's been almost a year, and they're finally adding their first Call of Duty game to Game Pass. Yeah. <laughs> Think about that. On July 22nd, Inside, Inside of Game corroborated multiple rumors from various insiders claiming that Xbox would bring Modern Warfare 3, not to be confused with 2009's Modern Warfare 3, to Game Pass on July 24th. It's expected that Microsoft and Activision will officially announce the news on Tuesday, though with it leaking out ahead of schedule, it's possible Xbox will change plans and tease Modern Warfare 3 on Game Pass later today. Modern Warfare 3 is far from a favorite of Call of Duty installment, with many complaining about its extremely short and not very good single-player campaign. In her review, Kotaku's Claire Jackson called it a largely unsatisfying experience. Hopefully, Activision will add better Call of Duty games to Game Pass in the, new f in the near future. Hey, Microsoft, uh, th why don't you add Call of Duty Finest Hour while you're at it? Mm -hmm. I, I watched a review of Final Hour when I was Call of Duty Final Hour when I was thinking of getting it. I think from IGN and the IGN reviewer said Call of Duty Finest Hour is its, its finest hour in name only. <laughs> wow! This new Inside uh, Gaming report, which has yet to be confirmed by Xbox, lines up with previous reports that other Activision games like the Crash Bandicoot and Sane trilogy will be added to the game added to Game Pass in August. Earlier this month, Xbox announced plans to increase the price of Game Pass while also killing the cheaper console-only tier that provided players with day one releases. Game Pass is now a much pricier and more complicated deal than it was just two years ago, and knowing which games will be included with which tiers now requires a spreadsheet and some research. This recent price increase is likely a result of Xbox preparing to add more Activision games like Black Ops 6 to this service. News of the price increase was flagged by the FTC as an example of exactly the sort of consumer harm the agency was trying to stop. When you got me almost wanting to apologize to the FTC for going so hard on this merger, you know you messed up. Mm -hmm. um, but what do you think about Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 
the remake, the reboot, 2023's version, being at, being the first game they choose to add from Call of Duty to Game Pass. Not a bad move, especially that's the most recent Call of Duty, the game. They try to hype people up for Black Ops 6, so more sales or more usage of uh, Black Ops, um, uh, not 6, uh, but Modern Warfare 3, 2023, will be uh, a good sale in, uh, for, for, for a few more months. So that's good. And also, it'll encourage people to also buy more previous Call of Duty games like Modern Warfare 2019, 2022, called Modern Warfare 2, and also the older games like World at War, uh, Call of Duty 3, etc., etc. So um, the only problem is that, you know, to those that are new to Call of Duty, it's hard to keep track after a certain amount of time because, you know, there's, there's Modern Warfare 1, 2, and 3, and then there's Modern Warfare 1, 2, and 3 for for 2019, 2022, and 2023. So, because my friend, I, 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 I know it's a fresh conversation like this, but my friend, I'll call him um, uh, Mr. Flame. So, Mr. Flame and I we were trying to, we were so, or, we're so confused. Or he was so confused at first. I was like, hey, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Flame, we're going to play uh, Modern Warfare 3 2023. He's like, yeah, man, we're going to play Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 3. And I was like, okay, uh, no problem. And all of a sudden, you know, days later, it's like, oh, we're going to play that. Uh, 2009 Modern Warfare 3? No, no, Mr. Flame. It's the Modern Warfare 3 2023. So we're we're all we're fighting with each other. We're trying to find which one is which one. And I'm like, they make this so confused. They're like, what's going on here? <laughs> they ran out of titles to use, so they had to reuse them. I mean, we're like confused as fuck between all all two of us. I'm like, uh, listen, listen, Mr. Flame. Which one is it? Which one you want to play? Is it Modern Warfare 3 2011 or Modern Warfare 3 2023? And I and you have to say the the, the, the year. Come on, man. Yeah. yeah, now we have to add years to games because they had to reuse titles. <laughs> and we weren't even drinking. He doesn't drink and I don't and I haven't drunk in in a few weeks now, so <laughs> Well to steal a line from Lord of Patriarchy, I press X to doubt on that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um But yeah, I mean like I but the thing is uh you know um call of du there were call of duties that had short campaigns modern warfare 3 the remake uh call of duty ghost had like a four hour campaign but at the time most call of duty players wanted either short campaigns or no campaigns so they could jump right into multiplayer um, oh, yeah. but the thing is i mean like i would never expect call of duty modern warfare 3 remake why not take a, why not take advantage of the older games you know, Call of Duty 2 that you can't redo again in its original form. Why not Call of Duty Black Ops, you know, Black, hey, Black Ops 6 is coming out. Show people where it all began with Call of Duty Black Ops, um, the first one. But, I mean, it's, but, I mean, I, I think they're going to go back. I think what they're going to do is they're going to go back. Like, the next game you'll see is Modern Warfare 2 uh, remake. Yeah. After Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 re remake. It's just like, again, it, it's just it's just more Microsoft, um, figuratively shitting on their on this new collection of content that they have. And after all I mean, these months later, now they finally got to add one so far. Yeah, it's almost a year, and not one Call of Duty game has been added to Game Pass until now. Yeah, well, was, and Call of Duty was the most. Uh, most was the mo was what made this uh, Activision Blizzard merger so complicated. So it's like that, and and this is this and this is what you do. Nothing. Like the other studios they bought over the years too. I mean, you couldn't make you couldn't add the original Tony Hawk games. You couldn't add True Crime. You couldn't add this. You couldn't add that. You shut down a successful studio when you got Activision Blizzard. Wow. And you said that that studio made High Five Rush, and that looked like a good game to play too. And it was a, it was a successful game. I don't know if it made money or not, but it like did. a lot. Of, okay, so it it bought, it made back its budget and then some. It, what happened was that the game did so well that the studio closed down, and as a result, I think it's because something sort of regarding about legal legality issues or whatever with the money and all. So. Oh, okay. So it wasn't so it wasn't the quality of the game that killed the studio. Of course not. That's Redfall right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Microsoft. For the other studio um, that is with the Redfall. <laughs> yeah. Uh wow. Um remember when Redfall and Starfield looked like the only like like 
uh, looked like the only things that could save Game Pass. Yeah, pretty much. That was last year. Yeah, and now it's like, wow, what did this? What what shits those games were? Oh yes, definitely. And now and now we're gonna have the newest game coming out that's gonna be supposed to be a blockbuster hit called South of Midnight or something like that, where this is a feature of Black Lady again with uh, some sort of uh, hairstyle that I've never seen in a while. And it basically does, like, flying abilities through the swamp and all. Kind of weird. But let's try it out anyway. Let's see how it is. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's the same It's the same thought process that said, hey, we'll only release Alan 2 only. We'll release Alan 2 digitally only. And then a year later. Okay, we're releasing it physically. Kind of too late for that matter, because not everyone moved on for the matter. Exactly. Yeah. Um... All these so, collectors will buy the disc now if they if you're lucky. If you if they're lucky, yeah. I mean, but collectors are really going to just want to do it if it's worth anything, and if there's no demand, it's not worth anything. And I bet it's going to be like a day one patch, so you get a download on the disc itself. Well, actually, I think the day one patches are on the disc. Oh, so. that's good. That's good. That's perfect. Good. Yeah. So again, um, yeah, it's just more of how Microsoft is a, is fucking up. Yeah, so the so everyone's fucking up these days, and not 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 not, not dedicating themselves to good hard workmanship, dedication, loyalty to their uh, to their fan base, and um, and anything else in between. So, gee, is it any wonder I'd rather just play Apocalypse on my PlayStation or Final Fantasy Twelve on my PlayStation Two, or um, or uh, <laughs> Bad World on my on the Wii. Or any, or you know, other games like that. Is it really any wonder now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I bought those games, so I don't have to buy them again. You know, as long as I keep my power bill paid, I can play those games as much as I want. So as I maintain the disc, don't scratch them. Don't, right. You know, don't don't let the dog eat it. You know, you'd be fine. <laughs> well, uh, the PS2, the PS2, I do have to admit that does scratch. The PS2 laser is really intense. Sometimes it does scratch up disc just by overuse. Oh yeah. But that's other than that. That's then, like I wouldn't watch DVDs on the PS2 if you got like a PS3 or 360 or th- or Xbox One. But my Xbox One doesn't read DVDs anymore. Um, yeah, it only reads Blu-ray disc. And that's which, time. Yeah, which is fine because I do get now. You know, it's like now I got movies that I can watch on Blu-ray. Like there was an Evil Collection. I got Terminator Three: Rise of the Machines on double pack DVD and Blu-ray. That's nice, um, man. Oh wow! So you know, I got movies that I can watch on Blu-ray. It's just, it's like, but it, it you know, when you, you think about it, it's like when it comes to games, it's like, do I really want to? Yeah. Speaking of which. That brings us to our next topic, um, where, um, yeah, uh, you brought up two topics. I think it was Thursday night. Um, oh yeah, the state of YouTube game reviewers. Since these are your, since these were your suggestions, um, and we don't really have articles for them, I'm just going to let you uh, lay the groundwork of why you wanted to talk about this. Well, obviously, these have definitely changed the last couple of years since uh, Halo Infinite came out and all, and other games that have been in the flock, like that of uh, Redfall, and Starfield has been mundane and all, and the the, 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 the YouTube gamers, the, like that of The Boys Unknown, um, Angry Video Game Nerd, uh, Rutech USA, not every one of these people that I mentioned, but the people of that caliber who have, like, thousands, tens of thousands of subscribers, about hundreds of thousands of subscribers that have been on YouTube for decades, they're all starting to either quit or sort of they burnt out or they not they don't care too much about gaming as they used to. Even Scott the Wads, you know, we hear that, and this is from what I've gathered that, that is, even Scott the Wads, who was one of the biggest um, YouTube gamers of all, of all YouTube um, gaming, and he he probably get tired of doing stuff too. He he even said to himself in one of the clips of the videos that like yeah, you just don't want to play as much as you used to because you know things things so you gotta do shit you know. So it's kind of like that moment where as we get older, everyone's getting having um it's getting married to their girlfriends or having more more bills to pay, more problems, everything else. We hear that um, YouTubers like that of um who's a YouTuber where well, I don't know if you don't call him a YouTuber but like Destiny. 
uh, YouTube gaming that is the Destiny one. The Destiny that's like a separate politics thing. But like like he does stream, and I think he does that at one point in, in his um, career on YouTube and all. So all these people are having problems. Even Boogie two nine eight eight himself is having problems. So it's kind of like everyone started to act all irrational now than ever, and it lose lose the quality of of the YouTube gaming community or the um, the core essence of the or the in in um, of the integrity of the YouTube gaming community as a whole. Now we all want to do crazy stuff online to entertain others, stuff like that. And we see, you know, guys like Boogie today, he did a tattoo on his face, like here and stuff like that, just to say he's a liar on that on that tattoo, whatever. But um, it's it's getting out of hand, guys. Like I think I think it's just, it's the point where it's like as we get older, we get more giving more problems to people online, and giving more of our business online, and it's like we're not doing you know the the, the, the audience a favor and and doing all this stuff. And I'm not picture perfect myself. There are times I do act irrational in the past on my past videos. Unfortunately, I don't have all my videos recovered uh, from transferring from the computer to data, you know, to the um, external hard drive and all, and vice versa. So, you know, my videos that I did stupid stuff on, whether it's, I was licking an Xbox or, you know, just just fucking dancing on the video, or whatever, with a, with an AK-47 as a toy that is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I'm trying. I I guess you can say is that the the, the state of the YouTube gamers has starts gotten a little bit over exaggerated, and uh, you know it's for the sake of views now and about monetization. And me personally, I don't care about monetization in, in the last God knows how many years so far because I'm not I'm not because all my YouTube videos are are, are copyright owned or not copyright owned but copyright because copyright DMCA. So to me, it's this: I'm doing it for the sake of my own genuineness of my content and all. Not because of money making or trying to make an ad revenue. That's what's going on in today's world with the YouTube as, as a YouTube gaming specifically. Because everything's about monetization now. It's about you know, appealing to the YouTube gods of, oh, you know, we gotta appeal to YouTube gods for for sake of monetization through ant censorship or through vanilla content and stuff like that. You want to call it like that. Political correctness, you know, censorship, you name it, and it's like all that stuff too. And all with the, try to be desperate for for views, at, even if you're not getting the monetization for it, 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 it created a kerfuffle of stupidity in the in the, the YouTube gaming reviewer slash YouTube gaming community, in my opinion. And um, I think we're supposed to stop it all altogether, but you know, it's nice to see what we what we're doing to ourselves on YouTube and. Specifically with YouTube gaming and try to go back to the roots of YouTube gaming because 15, 10 years ago, you see all these Let's Play stuff like that. It was about the game playing and the, and the personality behind playing these games, like Dashy or or guys who played Time Crisis Four and I recorded on YouTube. Still there to this day, last time I checked. So you know, there's like you know these people who are actually stick with their genre, stick with what they know, they know, and not try to fuck it up for everyone else. You know, so. That's what's going on in my in my opinion as a YouTuber since 2006. I've been on YouTube users since 2006 of August, my birthday. That is August 30th, 2006, and I've been on YouTube as a gamer, YouTube gamer since 2015 of October. With my gaming channel now that that's now been copyright claimed by some rapper or whatever because I use some of his rap songs in that. Now it's just a new channel for the last two or three years and try to avoid as much as possible these people's songs and whatever. Try to cross promote them or try to promote them, but they don't want that. And that's what's going on today in YouTube gaming as well too, where it's all these copyright claims going on, where they're not trying to, they're not trying to think about getting their, their, their information or their talent or their content out there. It's about money now. Like, oh, you use my, my, my videos for, for, for your, making your videos and your content for monetization. And it's not about them. For me, specifically, that is. I try to help you out as a YouTuber. They've been on for decades on, and you still haven't gotten anywhere until someone shared your videos. It has not been for sharing your videos for the last several years. Like myself, for example, as a, as a small timer, then you wouldn't be out there and about doing what you're doing right now. No offense to some of these YouTube gamers or any just YouTube, YouTubers in general. So... Uh, it, it doesn't make any sense about the selfishness of the matter. It's about being genuine. It's about being selfless sometimes. And I understand we don't owe each other. We don't, we don't owe anyone else a, a, a thing to begin with. So why should I care as a YouTuber trying to look, look out for myself? Well, you know, you're, you're competing against the legacy media. You're competing against um, these YouTubers as well, too, uh, who are higher than us. Way higher, like the PewDiePie's of the world or Mr. Beast, you know, like those guys have been out there and about you know doing their own thing, you know, and uh, 
and also the legacy media themselves too, and that and that's a fashion too, because now they're trying to take down Tim Pool, they're trying to take down all these YouTubers and stuff like that, because they they're ones that are all left to try to talk about something very distinct other than the mainstream media that we hear for the last fifty years, because obviously when before YouTube, before the internet, we had to listen to the media like NBC, CBS, CNN, and I trusted those type of people. I will I will admit that I was that goal to listen to those people. But now with the internet, everything's exposed to a lot of shit. So it's kind of like the kids are seeing it. You know, we gotta like shape up a bit to see what we're trying to do with uh, YouTube as, as a whole together, in my opinion. That's how I look at it. And, uh, you know, say the YouTube, YouTube reviewers, um, YouTubers all together, YouTube gamers. Um, it's just, you know, I guess I guess you say is that it's been it's been dying in a sense because of these situations happened in the game gate in the last 10 years now that developed over that 10 years in my opinion so that's all i gotta say for the matter if you want to talk more about it to yourself triple j yeah well um, honestly as i was listening i felt like you were jumping back and forth between this topic and our next topic um so uh like uh personal gaming and like how i feel gaming personal wise i'm gonna save that for next um right. i'm really gonna be sticking to just youtube uh, people that I watched and that even shaped me as a reviewer in some way, shape, or form um, that I watch. Um, I'll start with the original three. Uh, first was Darkness the Curse, who joined us in 2020. He hasn't done a YouTube video like in 10 months. Oh, wow. If you, and those were like Let's Plays or streams of SimWorld Train. And it's like, um, I know most of his videos on Twitch are locked behind You Have to Be a Subscriber. But I don't even know when he streams on Twitch or if he does stream on Twitch anymore. Um, and by that, I mean if you want to watch them uh, on demand. If you watch them when he's streaming live, then you don't have to be a follower. Um, at least last time I checked. Um, the Iway Gamer, surprisingly, he's actually... Um, I mean, he took a few years off. Quite a few years. But he is back. And... He's um, doing, re and he does uh, these short reviews. I think that's actually part of the charm. You know, anyone can do a 30 minute review, but when Irate Gamer does six, eight minutes for a review, it's like, okay, you can watch it and then go something else. You're not watching a 20, 30 minute mini movie. That's a big thing, too. Those 30 minute videos as well, yeah. Um, so, but Irate Gamer, he's taken some time off, um, and it's. Um, and uh, he's doing good. Like I said, I got a, I got a bunch of his videos to cap, catch up on, at least the game reviews. Um, I watched a couple last night. So it's... Uh, and he's on Patreon now. So now he can move his series like I Wait the 80s and I Wait Gamer to there if people want to catch him early because he says they'll be on Patreon for months before they, get, they go to YouTube. Um... And then uh, Swag, uh, he, his 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 channel is now called Aristocards, and on almost all his content from when he was Swag Show is gone. Wow. Hmm. He had like thirty reviews. There's like three reviews left. Um, his movie reviews are gone. His ga his uh, game opinions are when he uh, there was a point in his work where like he'd be driving thirty miles an hour because of so much traffic. Hmm. And he'd record a video because he could drive and focus on the slow uh, speed of traffic at the same time. Those are gone. It, it, as far as I can tell, everything is gone. Oh, almost everything is gone from when he changed over to Worcester cards. And since I'm not a Magic the Gathering or card game fan of those cards of any kind, his channel doesn't appeal to me anymore. Okay. Um, so there's that. There's, those are the original three. Um, angry video game nerd his quality um, he has good film quality he has good uh, production quality still but that's the only good thing left I mean it's just uh, the, the the reviews he the angry video game nerd in particular um, it's just it's j lost it's it's lost its appeal I'd say like Maybe after like review episode one thirty is when his quality um, of content started to go down. Okay. Because it's just it doesn't have the same appeal, especially as the first hundred videos did. Uh, if you cut out the few early ones, which were a few, you know, the very very beginning. Um, I saw it two thousand six. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so, like, if you cutting out season one, because some of those reviews were just not that good either. Um, but he was just starting out at that time also. Um, but it's just like, you know, the people that he used to have on the channel, they're not there anymore. The new people suck. And it's also, people are dropping left and right from that channel. And from the group that's supposed to help him one Cine Massacre. And it, every time they that they talk about why they left Cine Massacre, it's the same thing. They didn't. They weren't getting paid, Damn. or they weren't getting paid uh, for all the work they did. Um, that's that why Kyle. Know. That's why his guitar guy Kyle Justin is no longer there because he helped remodel the Nerd's Garage into the new Nerd Room, and um, someone said they know Kyle Justin in person because they work for him, and he said he stopped doing he stopped doing stuff for um, the Nerd because he didn't get paid for it. Um, it's all about that money now. It's all about for the shows anymore. And there's like other people. Uh, uh, the last person that left, I heard that left was Kieran from this from the new batch of people. And Kieran said he was just he was with all the editing and all the stuff he was doing, and he wasn't getting paid or getting paid what he thought he should be because of all the work he was putting in. Um, you know, because think about it, the nerds got so many series. If you're the editor. Oof. Lots of editing, a lot galore. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and like I said, the nerd reviews just—they're like they I mean, I ordered the first six DVDs of the Angry Video Game Nerd, nice. so I can watch the first uh, like hundred, three, hundred, four episodes anytime I want. Um, if I have, at least if I have a, something that plays DVDs. Now, his new stuff—it's like take it or leave it, and I—I I leave it. Like uh, I used to be. This is what it, what I feel. Um, it's like when a, when a new nerd video came out, and he was still like in the first hundred episodes, or he was in the like seventies, eighties when my younger brother watched them. It also it was like I can't, it's like oh a new nerd video I can't wait to see it. And now it's like a new nerd video. I'll get to it eventually. Yeah, literally. <laughs> um. And he's, I mean, the thing is, he does this show, he does a new series called Neighbor Nerds, where he and the uh, uh, proclaimed neighbor sit down and play video games. And that's honestly more interesting than the nerd. So, it's, you know, the nerds, the AV, AVGN, um, new AVGN episodes has lost my interest. Um, I think James Rolfe should do what uh, the irate gamer did and just go to Patreon. And just do the videos he wants. You know, maybe bring out the nerds sparingly, but mm -hmm. you know, it de it depends if if uh, like neighbor nerds or anything is getting more views than it would be getting enough views to carry the channel. Um, but it's yeah. So I mean, the point I'm making because I could go on. Um, I never really considered Re Review Tech USA a video game reviewer, so I really wouldn't want to throw him in there. But he do does have his own controversy. Um, Boogie2988, it's just that victim mentality. He's not happy unless he's a victim. Mm -hmm. um, from what I've heard. Uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's just a shame, but also it's like kind of like, all these people kind of change. Like, like I said, the at the beginning of this, the only one who hasn't really changed was Darkness the Curse, except an irate gamer. The only thing they did was take breaks, and then they eventually came back. Irate came came back during like 2021, uh, after COVID. It's like he said he finally had enough time to do reviews, and he's stuck with them, I guess, because his fan base never left. And that's uh, good. Yeah, and, that, and like I said, now he's doing it on Patreon. Um, so hopefully that that'll mean more videos uh, come to the YouTube um, than before. Um, so there's that. Um, so I'm trying to think of other reviewers. Uh, Dashy, which was a Let's Player, not really a, U a game reviewer. Um, but yeah, even Dashy's videos just don't have the same appeal. I don't know why. He's still consistent. He's very consistent with his work, though. I have to give come in for that. He's dedicated to his fan base, at least that, in my opinion. Okay, you know, so it's so it's probably just the games that he was playing just didn't interest me. Yeah, the um, games he are very independent, like they're made, made by independent um, um makers, not the AAA, not the like, Red Dead Redemption. He did like three, four years ago with Red Dead Redemption Two and all. Now that was he did a good job with Red Dead Redemption Two 
um, let's play gaming for two hours, whatever. I watched about thirty minutes of it, and he did pretty good himself. Like he's uh, he's very consistent in, in my opinion. That it's just that that one particular reviewer slash let's player, you want to call it like that. So because obviously when it comes to let's plays, you're reviewing the game at the same time. If you think about it, because you're helping the re- the, the viewer to understand as a gamer. If they if they are gamers or he's new to the gaming, they oh this is what the gaming looked like. Hey, I should get a copy of Red Dead Redemption Two and play it myself. And they get yourself a new customer, a new gamer altogether. So that's what happens in YouTube gaming slash YouTube game reviewers stuff like that because you know you get new new gamers altogether that never played games before or they feel prejudiced about it or oh I'm not gonna play that game and all of a sudden they see gameplay of it like Devil May Cry Five it's like holy shit. You know, you know, like that moment. You know, I want to get them like cry. Right. I want to catch up on this series and stuff like that. Because obviously, because to me as a as a viewer, at one point, like I've been a YouTube politics man. You were call me like that back in in the two thousand tens, late two thousands, early two thousand tens, and you know that's all I did was uh, mix in politics with gaming. I'll try to entertain my my player base, my my gaming. I'm a gaming base with my audience all together. Because obviously, that you know, talk about this review of uh, news and all was just boring to a lot of people out there. Because the average user uh, watching YouTube videos was about 30 seconds long, not even. And that was back in 15 years ago. Now I hear like TikTokers, you gotta impress the person in, in a, like, not even five seconds. That's crazy right there. I can't do that like, like these kids would do. So it's like, you know, that changed too. TikTok changed everything, and, and along with uh, newer sites like Gab and all, it's, uh, you know, it just changed everything over the over the years to the point where it's like, it's not trash per se, it's just that it's been so, like, you know, de- demoralized, in my opinion, or been, like, dehumanized, if you want to call it like it, because it's all about the almighty algorithm, the almighty, um, you know, c- political correctness. Even Twitter's um, executives were on these uh, shows on Twitter, uh, talk about like, hey, we're gonna try to censor people more, or we're gonna make sure people are not gonna, gonna stay behavior, behave, behave and all. I was like, who are you to tell us that who, how to behave or not? You're just a corporation. You're a, you're an executive of a company, and it was appealed to us, your customers, which is us, the users, on Twitter, or whatever, and as well as YouTube too. Whoever these people are, Susan Wajuk, you didn't think that way for years of being on as a CEO of YouTube. And look where it is that now, thanks to her. That's so yeah, she has her hand. It's this too as well. No offense, she's not there anymore, obviously, but still. You know, she did great damage, in my opinion, of the, to the company as the YouTube community as a whole. And now specifically with YouTube reviewers, the demonetization of it and everything, it's, it sucks, man. It really does in today's world. So that's how I look at it. Yeah, so, I mean, um, not, to, not to go on this too, long, too much longer because I don't want to go through every reviewer, but, I mean, a of lot of them... Every uh, Wii viewer is still around. Retro Gamer Three hasn't done anything, I think, in years. Um, but he, the last I heard, he was making his own games. Um, so, um, but he was having trouble getting them on any of the major platforms. So, like PC was the only one he could do it because you build the game on PC, so you can get it on PC. Um, so it's, um, but that's the last. But again, that was years ago. The last I heard from him uh, of him doing anything. Uh, so it's the point I'm trying to make is um, it, it's just changed a lot and it's also um, I don't want to go we're going to talk about our own personal gaming habits and how they've changed next so that's why I'm kind of leaving myself I'm not comparing any of these guys to myself because we're going to go over that next um, at least that's what I plan to do um, but it's just uh, you know, it's just like a lot of the people that were there are not there anymore, and um, it's just and and that's just uh, it's just a shame. It's just it just it's not it's it's not as appealing as it once was. Oh yeah. Um, anything else to add, or ready to move on to the second discussion? Move on to second discussion. Uh, the second discussion was the status of adult gaming for us in 2024. Uh, do you want to continue? Do you want to start this one off again? Yeah, sure. So that's, obviously I mentioned that too, but I had that discussion as well. I, I think we called the state of adult gaming as a first in 2024 originally, and the state of as a gamer in my 30s. You know, obviously things have definitely changed since the 1990s, early 80s. Um, 1990 especially, specifically when we were first born into gaming, like a Tomb Raiders and 
and um, what's it called? Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you name it. And uh, back then, I was like, it was lively, it was brightful, it was everything for us back in the, in those those times. Because 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 we had McDonald's that's so bright, brightly colored in the restaurants and all for the kids going in and eating McDonald's and all and Happy Meals stuff like that. And then we got the games that were so colorful and creative at the same time. Sure, in today's world, that the graphics was like horrendous. To the average, you know, kid out there, like, oh my god, that's too weird with, with those boobs. Oh my god, <laughs> something like that at first, in my in my opinion, because uh, you know, things as things have changed the last twenty five thirty years. Last time we, we we first started playing gaming, so because obviously when I come from school, I I was like, even though I was making fun of um by my like classmates at school every day, I always want to play Mortal Kombat or Mario or or even uh, Sonic if I had the opportunity to play them. And I met these twin, uh, twin kids, um, called Jay and Janae, You know, that they were my mom's friends, you know, daughters and a son. So I haven't seen them in at least fifteen years now. But the point is that like I made friends with them, even though we lost contact after a while. You know, all this stuff happened. It was like we were really, like, the, like the, the the game itself created this culture over time because we were the lonesome you know, players in, in some cases to some of us who are by ourselves in our room reading books, studying for school, or at least I was doing that at least. And all of a sudden, you know, you meet these people at parties and barbecues. We all come into this, to the kids' room, like 10 of us were playing um, WF Attitude, GoldenEye, 007. It was a blast. Actually, I, I kept on to their phone numbers. That's I, at, least, or at least something like that. Or try to go talk to, see how we can get, say, content or whatever, but no, I never thought about that. It was there was great experiences back then. We don't have that anymore as an adult game because we we're busy. We we're moved to different parts of the of the, of the world, if not the United States. Some of these people that listen to them, you know, we are you know we're just like as an adult gamer, uh, like it's so different to the point where like you want to play ten hours straight of let's say Crash Bandicoot, Insane Trilogy, or even games like Path of Exile, these new games you ever played in a while if or heard of. And all of a sudden, you can't do it because your attention span is not the same like it once was when you were a kid. Because when you're a children, you're you're sponges. We're like sponges. We absorb everything in with no problem. And then, then it, over time, that starts to churn and to process in our in our bodies, both mind, body, and spirit. And all of a sudden, as into your adulthood, you know, at first the twenties were great. Uh, that's why my my reflexes were, were were remarkable with Halo Three and Time Crisis and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, for the last couple of years now, you know, that's when we start aging. That's at the average start age start, start you start to age officially is thirty six. I'm thirty six right now. Your brain, your 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 motor functions, your cognitive abilities, they all change so so, so suddenly. And but even though you lose some of it, you gain judgment. You gain plan a plan ahead. You try to plan ahead by several fold to your to your teammates on Apex Legends, and I'm trying to tell these kids, not kids, kids, but like they're like, yeah, we're gonna go in there. I want to start start fighting motherfuckers and stuff like that. I'm like, dude, this is not Call of Duty. This is a battle royale. Like this is not. It's totally different. Like because if it's like World War Three, if, if ever, you're not gonna go after the enemy by yourself with no weapons, no ammunition, whatever. That's crazy. Like like it, it's kind of like a simulation now to me to. In my perspective, what I want to train for, mentally speaking, if ever, if ever on a battlefield one day in, in our country going to war or whatever. Now, of course, you want to say, Dr. Games, it's just a game. It's nothing like that. Like, it's a simulation at best. With the the, the, the rifling and the, the assault rifles, the grenades, you name it. Also, that's Paul Paul, the army experiments, experimentation. To, or if you want to literally keep it like that, in a sense. But still, that's how it is. It helps us train for the, the real thing if you practice on the field first for a while. Because I used to be on a rifle team and stuff like that back when I was a kid. And I knew that it when I first started feeling a rifle in my hand, it's a powerful thing. You know, it's it's really that powerful. So I kept that in mind all these years, thanks to Mr. P, the, the coach of that time. And I have people vouch for me on and from my yearbook. If I go back to them, like, hey, remember Mr. P and all? He'll be like, yeah, I remember Mr. P. He helped you train, man. That was good. That's good. You're getting better and all. So I was getting better in that stuff. I had to leave because of because uh, uh, I had schoolwork to attend to. My mom wanted to do because I was a little black in for a few months. But anyway, as far as being back into game, being an adult gamer and all, it's a different atmosphere altogether. You know, 
I have plenty of time to play games if I really want to right now. I don't have a full time job. But when I but when I do try to play whenever I can, it's like the same feeling. It's all about just it's about it's something I can't explain where it's like, you know, you gotta think about getting that getting that money, gotta get that power, gotta get everything, you know, it's like, because obviously as you get older, you know, as an adult, you know, altogether, some some people, some men, they want conquest for power, and that's what happens after a while, you know, you don't, you don't think about the every, the everyday family stuff, you think about, like, world domination, and, you know, like, like, like the, like the, like that, uh, steward kid from Family Guy, he always think about world domination at such a young age, that wasn't me when I was a kid, I was thinking about candy, I was thinking about Pokemon, stuff like that, you know, that back then was the, it was a joyful experience. Now it's like that's it. All my enemies be crushed, and we all play Apex Legends every single day for two hours. Not, and then we go to the gym once a week. You know, type of man. You know, some shit like that. Like you know, that's how I feel. Like sometimes I like, being that that kind of like macho, world dominant man type of shit. You know, going on. So that's all I have to say for the man with the being an adult gamer, or, be, or at least adult being adult in adult gamer as of this year. Or so okay, so. First off, I have to say, Dr. Games 101 lacking in schoolwork? I never thought I'd hear something so ridiculous. <laughs> um. <laughs> that was during rifle. That's when I was, I was feeling more powerful than ever with that gun. I was like, yeah. It was a 21, it was either a 21 caliber or a 22 caliber. I'm not sure. I forgot the exact term, caliber. Anyway, yeah, that's what it was like back when I was a kid. No, it's, it's, it's 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 just the way you've talked uh, so much about doing schoolwork. It's it's almost like you were, um, I don't I don't want to I don't want this to sound wrong, but it's almost like your mother was threatening you with a whip if you didn't get your schoolwork done. She was uh, kind of like that. She was the tiger mom <laughs> for me, but yeah, and, and she, she 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 made she helped me a lot in my life as far as doing what what, what I did back then. Have not been for what what happened at back then. I think right now we'll all be in like some form of World War Three in a sense. Or I don't think I'm taking credit in what happened for the last 15 years. But let's just say that there are people in my life like you and everyone else, especially on the internet for the last 10 years, where it's like we did something good together, whether we see it or not. You know. <laughs> but, but anyway, um, what Doctor Games One Hundred One talked about because. Uh, uh, we only talked about briefly this um, last night, so I'm gonna be talking about something completely different. Um, okay, sure. But because uh, what uh, what originally sparked this uh, this is right before Doctor Games 101 mentioned this topic um, as a suggestion um, was um, I told him that I was supposed to basically do a gameplay stream, um, but a I didn't want to play that game because it's not it's a game that looks good, but I. I, but it's a game I have available in the store. I really don't want to play it. Just to, I'm not interested. Um, and the second thing is also um, I use a um, if it it's not Xbox One and it's not Total Extreme Wrestling on my PC or laptop. Um, I have to move my laptop over to the other side of my room, closer to my TV, um, because I got a little snack tray set up there. I got clean off that snack tray and. Um, that's that I could put the capture device uh, through the USB to my laptop and basically record anything PS3, PS2, whatever. Um, and it's just like I'm not in the mood to do that anymore. Um, I haven't been in the mood to do that, do let's plays, streams, whatever. I don't know if it's burnout because uh, part of me still wants to record it, but part of me doesn't want to go through the trouble of recording it. Um, Obviously, I am going to get back to it. Maybe I'll play just play the games I want. Whether or not they get views is is regardless. Because I like I love playing Tropico Four, but it doesn't get any views. So I love playing Sewer Shock on Sega CD. I am going to continue to play those games even if they don't get views. So it's that's basically it's just like yeah, I just don't want to play this game. But you know, at the same time, you don't want to stick to just a few games. But maybe I should stick to those games because those games is what I like. Um, so it's I've just been a lot less interested in making whether it be Twitch streams or YouTube because like I stream on Twitch and that way I can just export the whole video to YouTube. Um, it's I'm a, I'm a lot less interested in just making gameplay streams and it's not. It's not um, that I'm uh, not interested in playing video games. I still play video games off screen. 
um, just in the privacy of my own home or when I'm not streaming or recording. But it's just like the recording of it, it's part of me wants to do it because like I want to play Final Fantasy XII and record the whole thing of me going through that entire game. I want to record me doing Apocalypse all the way through on PlayStation right. and Chrono Cross on PlayStation and so on. But at the same time, it's kind of like, it, at the same time, it's like too much trouble. Yeah. Um, now, keep in mind, unlike Dr. Games 101, I do have a 40-hour-a-week job. I work Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., and then Saturday, 9.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. So that obviously plays a part in it. You can't stay up too late. You got, you know, you got to make sure you get sleep so you can go to this, so you can work at this job. Um, you know, because that's how I pay my bills every month. But at this, but at the same time, it's like, uh, and also I do have a business that I run, uh, my online marketplaces. Um, but at, the, but it's just, I don't know. It's just something it's just i don't want to it's like i don't want to go through the trouble of streaming anymore if it's going to cause me any trouble and it's i just don't want to go through that trouble anymore especially the fact that everything's now on youtube to a point where you just uh you want to do everything on youtube with the game and all because... yeah that's that that too i do admit i do want to do that i do want to go through youtube uh, you know um i might get super mario world again for the super nintendo if I can find an authentic cartridge, not a Wii, Wii Pro, um, and I might play through Super Mario World, unlocking Star World and everything, um, if mm-hmm. I can. I because um, unlocking Star World is actually pretty hard um, if you don't know all the secrets. Because um, to unlock, uh, from what I heard, now I might be wrong on this, but if in Super Mario World on Super Nintendo, if you want unlock Star World, you gotta Hit you gotta you use gotta the secret and you got secret exit in every level that has a secret exit. Mm-hmm. Um, did you do you remember Super Mario World on Super Nintendo? Yeah, I got the copy of the game still. Okay, so what I'm gonna so I'm just gonna explain briefly what it is. Um, if a level has a red dot, it has a secret exit. If a level is represented by a yellow dot, then there's just one exit reaching the end of the board. If you from what I heard, if you want to unlock Star World. You gotta in every level that's a red dot. You gotta find the secret exit in that level and use it. Basically, you had to go to Chocolate Mountain after that. Yeah, so yeah, that's Chocolate Island. I think is it. I think it's Chocolate Island. It's World Six. Yeah, because the forest, the forest episode, of the 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 puzzle of that forest was a was a bitch. I will admit that. Actually, I think <laughs> that I figured out. Um, I fa- Paul, yeah, I found out too later on. Yeah. Well, I no, I didn't know for it. Um, like uh, a friend talked to me about this ten years ago because he saw my video on YouTube. He's like, "Yeah, that forest of illusion. I, I know there's a way to get out of there, but I forgot where it is." For anyone wondering, um, if you're in the forest of illusion, forest of illusion one has a secret exit. You use that exit, it'll take you to the ghost house. Um, I don't know if the ghost house has a secret exit or not. Um, I'm gonna say probably not because it's just a ghost house. You know, it's not a yellow dot. It's not a red dot. Um, but basically, you gotta beat the Forest of Illusion ghost house, and then you get out of the Forest of Illusion, um, and to Chocolate Island World Six. Um, but it's but back to how it is. It's just like yeah, I one part of me wants to stream everything on Twitch and then export it to YouTube. Part of me just doesn't want to go through that trouble. Um, now maybe um, now I'm not gonna make myself play games I don't want to play. That's stupid. Um, Midnight Club Street Racing for PS2 looks all right, but it's just not something I'm interested in playing right now, so I'm not going to play it. Um. So yeah, so but I, it's just that's 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 kind of where I am. I want to play games, but at the same time, I don't want to go through the trouble of recording them. Yeah, that's especially the, especially the fact that everything's been censored, everything's been monetized to the point where it's like. If you're not making, if you're making money for the company of YouTube, they'll put you on the back burner and you just get no, get no views at all if it doesn't share them. 
play. Not to, yeah, I mean, um, I actually think about this one time. I remember when Games USA was, or whatever their channel was, was uh, rec- trying to recruit me in 2015. This is when game partnerships, uh, channel partnerships were big. Um, oh, yeah. One, one multi-channel network even reached out to me. But I didn't care about the time because I, had, I was earning money through AdSense. Because this is before they, ki- they raised the... Uh, Requirement to be a YouTube partner. Yeah, Apocalypse is called. Yeah. Um. So it's so it's kind of like you know I I almost wish if they would because I'm not uh, I almost wish they would still recruit me because I can make thousand views or more on a video, so I would get paid you know seven dollars for every thousand views or whatever it is. But you know I don't know if they would do that because there's no AdSense to take since I'm not making AdSense. Um. So. You know, obvious. So obviously, I haven't heard from them, but it's kind of like, uh, yeah, it's just, um, just to put a final on it. Yeah, the pat. I want to do it, but part of me says it's not worth. You know, move cleaning off that table, moving my laptop over there, recording, exporting, putting it on YouTube, then moving the laptop back here because this is also the laptop I use for work. Mm-hmm. Um. And um, so yeah, so that's that's basically uh, just uh, what it's been. That's what I was basically thinking of. Um, I'm gonna get back to it, obviously, but like I said, uh, probably pl- uh, a lot less of the games that I, instead of putting games in a randomizer and having the randomizer choose, I think I'm just when it's time to play a game, it's like, what do I want to play today? Hey, let free will do it, not just some um, you know spitter, you know. Yeah. Um, anything yeah. else to add, or ready to move on? I like to say that one thing, though, if I can, okay. really, if I can really say this in the proper manner. Um, now, as a gamer in your thirties, you know, yes, you, you got a lot more responsibility than you were back when you were fifteen years old. You know, with the bills and all, and you know, possible relationship opportunities, stuff like that. So, all this is played in my mind sometimes to the point where I can't focus. I used to in gaming as often as I did back fifteen, twenty years ago. Especially back during uh, in when I had played Halo Three a lot when I was like what twenty two years old, twenty one years old, so you know a lot of that's happened since then, and also the fact that so you get more diseases like I get I have schizo to be schizo affective to those that are aware that I have a mental illness or been identified by a psychiatrist that have a mental illness, so that's a hindrance as well too to my game playing because a lot of tricks playing to have because obviously you overthink too much stuff like that too. Because when you were younger, you know, you didn't have that feeling of your brain being all, like, filled up with a lot, lot of junk. You want to call it like that. If you want to call it junk. So that's another thing, too, as a person with mental illness. And I, was, I think um, someone can vouch for this, but as a person with mental illness out there, you know, that's how it is in some gaming aspects, too. Or at least uh, in the, in the uh, experience um, of, of gaming, you want to call it like that. So, yeah. So that's all I would say for the matter. Okay, so uh, ready to go back to the last two stories for tonight? Oh, yeah, and thank you, uh, Triple J, for uh, giving us the opportunity to talk about these matters, and hopefully people will hear this sooner or yeah, later. Yeah, uh, actually, no, uh, thank, thank you for bringing it up. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't have thought of it myself, um, but I really enjoyed having these discussions. Yeah, especially what happened for the last couple of years with these YouTubers and the state of YouTube gaming. Yep. So it, it all came at the right moment for the matters. So. Yep. That's all I got to say. All right, so next coming coming up next, another day one game is coming soon to Xbox Game Pass. Currently in Steam Early Access, Core Keeper will arrive on consoles in August. Um, add um, add Core Keeper as another day one game in X- for Xbox Game Pass. Developer Pugstorm has revealed that the Mining Sandbox Adventure Game will be a part of the subscription service on Xbox Series X and S and PC when it launches August 27th. Xbox Wire revealed the upcoming additions to Game Pass as Core Keeper is playable for solo adventures up, um, or up to eight players in online co-op. The game features base building, crafting, farming, fishing, and bosses in battle called Titans. Uh, Core Keeper has been in Steam early, a- Steam early Access for a couple of years now. Uh, the t- the 1.0 update featuring customizable world generation and a new biome will see the title also arriving on PS4, PS5, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox One next month. 
However, keep in mind Game Pass is only promising the Xbox Series console edition currently, not Xbox One. So if it's not on the cloud, Xbox One base owners, you're screwed. Um, yesterday, Microsoft brought Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 to Xbox Game Pass, making the first time the FPS franchise has appeared on the service. It joined five other games that have recently arrived in Game Pass in July, such as Flock and Fitlock, The Siege of Dawn. This month has also seen Microsoft increase the price of Game Pass, as well as create a new tier for the service. Xbox Game Pass Standard will take over for the soon-to-be-discontinued Game Pass for console. One big difference, however, is Standard won't feature day one releases like Core Keeper. Here's an explainer on how the new tiers of Game Pass work. There's no comments. Um, have you heard about this game, Core Keeper? Core Keeper, never heard of it, though. It Does it sound like a game that you would be interested in? Sounds like it got like, about bees or whatever, but okay. <laughs> well, no, it's like crafting, farming, mining, uh, base building, stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's. That's something I think. I don't build things, I destroy things. So, <laughs> you know? That's why I play Apex most of the time, or Devil May Cry, you know? <laughs> Hack and slash or shooting, you know, that's about it. Pew pew, slash slash, you know? Right. <laughs> you know, destroy, destroy, destroy. <laughs> it's that type of moments, you know? Right. <laughs> It's like the it's like from that um that scene. I I know it's just going we're going back forty years ago because get you gotta be a hardcore Dragon Ball f follower. But there's a scene where uh Goku go up against this big robot guy. And he was like destroy, destroy every time he punches and kicks and shit. Cause it's like a fucking like seven foot tall motherfucker. So you know so that that was a good moment of of, of uh, Dragon Ball right there. To those who are long time fans of Dragon Ball, so. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, no, I mean, this sounds good. This sounds something like I would try at least once if I still had Game Pass. Um, but like they, like they said, it's the Xbox Series version coming. So if you don't have an Xbox Series and it's not playable through the cloud, Xbox One gamers are going to miss out um, actually getting this game through Game Pass. Oh, um, you're going to have to buy the game. Um, buy the system especially. Right. Or, or again, or buy the system. And then, and then you can play it on Game Pass. But um, well, I don't care about this game that much. Um, it sounds like something I would at least try. I have to say, um, there's not really much anything else to say about this game. Uh, you ready for the final story tonight? Oh yeah, definitely. All right. Next, Fortnite is being removed from this storefront today. Epic Games has a new solution coming. That means 8, 9, 10-year-olds don't run with, to Epic Games headquarters with pitchforks just yet. <laughs> Epic Games has announced that it will be remo removing Fortnite and its other games from the Samsung Galaxy Store in protest today, claiming that Samsung is engaging in anti-competitive practices. Oh. Epic Games says that Samsung's decision to block side-leading by default on Samsung Android devices... Um, uh, stifles competition in the Android app distribution market. Due to the restriction of sideloading, Samsung users are only allowed to install apps from the Google Play Store and Galaxy Store. However, Epic Games has a new solution in mind. Due to the European Union passing the Digital Market Act, Epic Games is now able to create its own storefront for Android worldwide and iOS in the EU. The storefront will only be cha charging game developers with a 12% processing fee and nothing on third-party payments. Additionally, Epic Games has revealed that, a mo that its mobile games will go to Alt Store on iOS in the EU, and it will now support for at least two other third-party stores soon. Epic Games recently called out Apple for arbitrary rejections of its new App Store, claiming that Apple was misusing its app review process by delaying competitors for as long as possible. Fortnite has been removed from IO since 2020, but it looks like it may be coming back eventually. So, let's look at the comments. Uh, uh, Rohan Rocks 88 goes, that's pretty stupid. Anyone who knows how to use their phone can turn that off pretty easily and quickly, and not sure how protecting... Uh, from apps downloading files on their own is anti-competitive as I leave it on until I need to sideload an app then switch it back. 
-hmm. And Bobo888 goes, good. Keep it off. Fortnite is for children. Well, can't argue with that. Um, so what do you think of this? Um, it's basically, basically console players aren't affected. This is all about phones and stuff. Yeah, because obviously Fortnite's everywhere, from consoles to phones to even a toaster. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, it's uh, it, it's not. I mean, this is a surprise me at first because obviously Samsung. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with Samsung per se, but you know, Samsung is not the, not the the best phone product out there, uh, to my awareness. Even though they're there for decades, so I guess you say in recent times it started to come crappier uh, with Samsung. I don't really use Samsung as much as I used to, you know, TVs and and other and phones even. Uh, last time I used a Samsung, man. What if I still have a Samsung in my room? But I guess they say I guess they, I think they also do Walkmans too, right? Samsung by any chance? I don't think so. I think that was Sony Walkman. Right? Yeah, Sony Walkmans. I don't I know about the Sony Walkman, but Samsung did have their own CD player. They got bought a CD player from years ago. Last time okay. I checked too. Oh, keep in mind this is like what the late '90s at the old at the earliest. Yeah, thanks to my family and all buying me that that CD player, but um, that's that that was back then, of course. But other than that, in recent time, things definitely got more crappier in quality because obviously, companies are cutting corners now with their with the production all, and from like even car batteries too, they start to screw that screw that up too sometimes with the car batteries from China and all. So it's all it's yearly practice where it's like these companies like Microsoft, um, Kobe, Sony, like they all like getting cheap. Um, manufacturing in China, Southeast Asia area, you know, it's it sucks, you know, they, they, they not care about their consumers, and I also care about the workers too, they making their product too, because because I hear there was a strike going on, and that in regarding about sales of person, there was a strike going on with some electronic company where they're paying their wage that these workers so low that they start ransacking the place uh, that 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 pays that pays for them. So it was that bad going on. This was back like well, well, last year, last summer, if I recall correctly. So these companies, as big as Microsoft, as big as um, what's it called, uh, Samsung and all, they gotta take care of their, their people and also their customers too at the same time. They can't they can't just be cheap, too cheap with the uh, the product, you know, and service too. Yeah. Um. So it's so. Uh. Yeah. I. I really don't have much to say about this because you know I'm not a, a, I'm not a, really a cell phone gamer. Yeah, um, I understand. But you know, I mean, you know, the more avenues, I guess, the better for consumers. Um, so you know, if you were, I mean, but I think anyone who cared about having Fortnite on their phone wouldn't they have it by now? Oh yeah, especially me. Like I played Fortnite last time I played Fortnite was at least six months ago. I'm not that into Fortnite because I'm so into Apex, and obviously the all competition: Apex, Fortnite, PUBG, H1Z1, you name it. Like these are the top tier battle royale games, and you know, also life service games to begin with too. Because thanks to uh, the company behind the Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, they tried to they think that they could be part of that that league, and they're like, hell no, that that's a totally different atmosphere. It was Suicide Squad and. Uh, PUBG and Apex and all like you gotta be your own your own entity in order to compete with uh, Fortnite and Apex you know right yeah, Suicide like so, Squad is nothing in comparison to you know Epic Games and stores and stuff like that so yeah so I mean uh, this is what um, Epic Games is doing um, if you were gonna buy from their store um I just have nothing else to say on this, unfortunately. I just uh... And that's the end of the Let's Discuss Gaming podcast. So I hope you enjoyed this. Follow us if you did. Um, Dr. Games 101, do you have any plans for tomorrow? Uh, well, after we're done, um, we're done for the night, I'm going to uh, try to play more um, Cyberpunk 2077. And, okay. and maybe some um, uh, play the games that came for the Game Pass 2. I forgot the name of it exactly. It's a, it's a, it's a Chinese, if not a Japanese name. It's definitely not Neo. It's definitely not Ghost of Tsushima. It's, an, it's an, one of these independent game, games that came up for Game Pass recently. Um, I'll try to play that with you guys sometime um, this week as well. But for the last several weeks ago, not weeks ago, about a uh, couple of a week ago, I was sick to the point that I couldn't do much game playing. So I had to stay in bed for a few days. So I feel much better now. Just have a sore throat. You can tell from my voice. 
and uh, you know, hopefully I feel better by a uh, lot better by uh, next week the latest. So. Okay. Um, as for me, I'm definitely going to be playing a game tomorrow. Um, I don't know what time. I don't know what game it's going to be. Um, it's going to be something I choose. Um, like I said, um, and that's uh, other than that, basically work on my store tomorrow. Um, but besides then, um, so I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, follow me if you did, and hopefully I'll see you next time I stream again on Twitch. Until then, good night, everyone. Later, guys. Goodbye.